to another episode of Anything Better with myself, Paul Bursey, Bill Burr, our producer, Andrew Themlis, and you guys are listening to a very special number episode, but I think we just got to give this one to the GOAT. Ladies and gentlemen, episode 23 goes to Michael, is it Michael Jeffrey? I don't know, Michael Jordan. Uh, there's some honorable mentions, Donnie Baseball, but you know what? I'll be honest with you, man. When it's Jordan, I'm just going to say this is episode Michael Jordan, dude. You know, it's this is this is the guy. Now, wait a minute. There's LeBron James. Some people try to say he's – I know you're a big LeBron fan. No, hey, great <laughs> player, not not MJ. I mean, he's not right. MJ. What about David Beckham? The way he used to bend it around those guys covering their balls. Yeah. When he's playing soccer. He married a Spice Girl. That doesn't count for anything. Nah, I, I think you got to just say it's Michael. Ryan Sandberg. <laughs> he's a good play good second base but it's jordan i mean what are we talking about it's michael jordan you know it would be like if ali had a number Boy, vincent bob nystrom didn't he score the uh the one to give him the first cup um bob gady mark Teixeira, louis tion come on louis tion <laughs> uh oil can boyd a couple of red Sox in there is it Mark, uh, Marcus Camby? He went to UMass. Oh, Marcus Camby went to UMass. Amherst. And, and he was a Nick. He was a good Nick. That's right. Uh, Themlist, is it Michael Jeffrey Jordan? Is that is that his full name? Is Michael Jeffrey? I believe it is. Bill, you saw him with hair. Is it Michael, yes, Michael Jeffrey? We yeah. both had hair yeah. last time I saw him. Uh, dude, I got to tell you something. First of all, I hope you had a great 4th of July. I got to tell you something, dude. We got a fucking problem in the neighborhood. And I just got yelled at at my wife. And I was like, you know what? I got to talk about this on the show. Okay. So apparently there's a man in our neighborhood who's like up and around that has this something happened to this guy. I don't know what it is. He's in his mid forties. Neighbor moved in, knocked on the door, introduced, tried to introduce himself. What? Okay. And the guy goes, yeah, I don't do that. We don't do that. We don't talk to neighbors. Please get off my property. I don't want to talk to you. And if you ever see me in my neighborhood or if you ever see me in the driveway, I don't want to see you, talk to you. I don't want your dog near us, anything like that. So they just go, it's probably just a slow walk with a cake. <laughs> <laughs> I, I this guy. Yeah, right? <laughs> no, so then, so then. Apparently, on the cake at his fucking screen door. No, but apparently. Oh, somebody, you yourself. So yes. now. A dog went on the guy's lawn and somebody, he'll just sit at the window and go, get that fucking dog off my, right? So now the kids are walking. Oh, around. wow. This so guy's taking kid, it to another level. Now the kids are walking and he's starting to yell at the kids. And I found out that my son and daughter was in a group of kids behind the kids that they got yelled at. And they didn't, he didn't say anything to my kids, but he's basically, there. there's like something, there's like an issue with this guy. Dude, I drove past the house and he's just holding his fucking hose just looking at cars like mean. So my question is, is this guy, is there something wrong with this fucking guy? But also, if he says something to my kids, I'm going to have an issue. So my neighbor gets a phone call from his friend who lives near this guy. The guy goes, dude, my dog is loose. I need help. So my neighbor drives by and that guy's outside. And he goes up to the guy and he goes, hey, man, we're just looking for a dog. Uh, did you see the dog? And the guy turned his back on him and just goes, go fuck yourself. Right. So he tells me this and now I got mad. So today I got lunch and it's on my mind and I'm just driving in my neighborhood and I get Stacy a salad and it's on my mind. So I drive past the guy's house and I decide that if I drive past the guy's house and he's out there, I'm going to tell him if he ever talks to my kids, I'm going to fucking kill him. Just something came over me. So I, 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 I literally, this is true. So I literally, I'm just, cause the way he was looking with his hose, I'm just going to go, listen, man, I know you're a little fucked up in the head. You say something to my kids, I'm going to fucking beat you in front of your fucking wife. Okay. So I just got angry. I don't know why. So I go there. He's not there. You're always good at like de-escalating things, you know, and just bringing it back to where it needs to be. So. So I go, I drive by, he's not there. And I see this pregnant lady, two houses up and I roll the window down. I go, Excuse me, man, can I talk to you for a second? And she goes, yeah. She goes, I go, is there something going on with this? And she just goes, oh my God, everybody knows it's such a problem. He, she like, this guy did this. And she goes, oh my God. She goes, if my husband was here, you'd be getting him fired up. 
All of a sudden, her husband comes out, no shirt on, holding a baby, gold chain, and an Italian gold horn. And I'm going, oh, God, me and this guy are going to be friends. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the guy's got a fucking horn and a baby in his hand. I'm like, this guy's a family guy. So he comes out and he's at first, he's like, who's this guy talking to my wife? But then he hears me talking about what's going on. I hear this guy's yelling at kids. My, my, my kids are friends with And he's going, dude, he goes, we were here three days and I'm walking my dog and you get that fucking mud off the, he goes, I just started laughing. So like, there's clearly something going on. That's the way to handle that guy. I would drive by that guy every day, whatever. Hey, Mark. Yeah. He said, blow him a kiss. The guy Oh, absolutely. I had a neighbor like that. Yeah. My wife used to whistle at him like he was sexy. He was this old guy. She used to whistle at him. She used to do that to me. Get all fucking mad. And yeah. he used to wait. He used to wait till I'd go on the road and then he would yell at her. And she wow. kept telling me to go, go downstairs. This is an old story. Go downstairs and confront the guy. It's like, I'm not going to confront this guy, man. He's like fucking 65 years old. You know, I was in my 30s at the time. I was like, I'm not fucking... He's an did old you guy. ever did you ever do anything? Did you ever say anything to him? Yeah, she finally goes, he yelled at me again. You need to go downstairs, right? So I fucking go downstairs. <laughs> and as I was walking up the walk, he was so terrified. He turned the terror into anger. And he was just like, Yeah, he made too much noise. He just started screaming. All of a sudden he was crying. I was doing this the whole time. I go, listen, I can't have you like yelling at my wife. She goes, She stomps all over the floor. And I was practicing guitar, too, at the time. I was trying to learn how to play guitar. At one point, he just goes to me. He goes, how's your band? <laughs> and, like, laughed at me. And then my wife fucking laughed at me because he said that shit. Dude, women got no loyalty. Uh, they got no loyalty. She uh, sends me down to go talk to this fucking guy. He probably fought in a fight. He was I'm probably older than that. Like, he was starting to lose it. Paul, put your hands next to your head. You're, like, fading into a dream sequence here. Put your hands next to your head. Your head. Take your hands. Did it work? Yeah. I don't know, dude. You look like you're in Back to the Future. (laughs) There we go. There you go. Now you're back. All right. What do you always do that with your teeth for? What are you doing? What? You always go like this. You go... There was something going... Dude, I've never seen a... You look... you, You like the way you look, dude. You no. like that? I'm going to like the way you look. You guarantee it. No. My favorite ever is Paul Verzi getting ready for a show before you go out. Dude, have a good one. Have a great time. Then there's a mirror. You stop. You go. Yes. <laughs> you All right. Fucking walk up. Uh, am I better now? I'm better? Good. All right. Go ahead. I was just waiting for you to do something with your mouth again. Am I good? <laughs> um. Anyway. Yeah. So she fucking sends me down there. The guy flips the fuck out. Makes fun of my guitar playing. And then I go upstairs and she's like, oh, shit. He said something about your guitar playing. And I was just like, it's like, that was an argument I didn't want to have. Dude, and then for the rest of the fucking time I lived there, I used to play with, like, the headphone plugged in so he couldn't hear me. I was, like, so self-conscious because I sucked. I was like, oh, my God. I didn't know my neighbors could hear me. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. I didn't know they could hear that. I'm so embarrassed. Uh, that's um, funny. He starts beating the shit out of you. She's laughing. <laughs> uh, I got. Oh. I was like, I mean, what he said was obviously hilarious, but like, I'm just trying to. It's always like, picture a world. Say it was a woman. It's like, okay, I'm a guy. I can't go down there and confront you. Go down there, and you know, yeah. you confront him, and then the guy. The woman says something about her cooking or about, you know, you need to go to the gym. You know, they always attack each other's looks and shit. And then she came back out and be like, oh, shit. (laughs) Yeah, man. Um, Yeah. And then I would be the biggest fuck. I went down there for you. And what they said really hurt my feelings. And for you to come back and be laughing at me. I mean, it'd be fucking five (laughs) days of that shit. Um, yeah, dude, I, I came home and I kind of gave Stacy the salad and I said, Hey, I, I took a ride by that guy's house and she just fucking laid into me. She fucking laid into me, man. She goes, what the fuck are you doing? 
She goes, you're going to fucking. I was kind of thinking that, dude. She goes, you're going to fucking escalate some fucking lunatic. She's, and he didn't even do anything to us. And I'm going, I think he yelled at a group of kids that our kids were in. And she's like, we don't know that. And I'm like, I think he, you know, and I was like, I just want to tell the guy, don't fuck around my family. And she was like, what, what the fuck? We got to do a big fight. So, so I'm going to lay off, you know, oh, dude, you, you got to go by one day, big smile and a wave like Jim Carrey in that movie. <laughs> good evening. Good afternoon. And good night. I mean, I would just like, the funny thing is there's not like one or just blow the horn. Wah, wah, and then, I mean, you got to. Yeah, dude, there's like not one case of him being nice. Like, it's always get away from me, get off, like yelling. But he's like, he's in his 40s. And I, I'm going, what like, there's got to be, it's got to be something. Where's your dog? Go, he turns his back and goes, go fuck yourself. I mean, that's, that's hilarious. He like, he just goes, go fuck yourself. And my, my buddy and his wife go, bye. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> like, what do you, yeah, it's brutal, man. But like, he like said something to his wife too. He said something to my friend's wife, like, get, get, the, uh, get can't your, have that. Can't have that. Get your kids the fuck out of here and shit. Like something is like, I want to know what. This is suburb shit. You guys, because it's not city. You don't show up with baseball bats. You guys should all go down there with wiffle ball bats. <laughs> and give them a plastic bat, cul-de-sac beating. No. Oh <laughs> By the time the cops get there, his legs won't be red anymore. There won't be any, there won't be any evidence. We should just all show up with cakes and pies. Hey, you like that's the way gifts. You know, as he's yelling, you hug him. Sending him letters. Pretend you're a secret admirer. So apparently, uh, another neighbor cut his wife off, cut this guy's wife off or girlfriend off in the car, and the guy found out which neighbor did it, and he walked over there, and the neighbor he the neighbor goes, "Yeah, come on my property, I'll fucking shoot you." I'll fucking kill you. Get up here. So like this guy what is fucking neighborhood. Do you live in? No, it, it, I think what the it shirtless is. Shirtless guys with gold shark tooths coming out. You talking to my fucking wife? No, I'm mad at what this fucking guy. All right. This guy's all right. You want to fuck him up? <laughs> fuck him up. Hey, where's my dog? Go fuck yourself. Yeah, come on my property. I'll fucking shoot you. You guys all sound like lunatics. No, I think what's happening is everybody. Are you rebooting is... the Sopranos? <laughs> No, <laughs> no, Bill, I think what's happening is everybody's tired of this fucking guy and like wants an issue with him to just put him in his place. I think that that's what it sounds. I think the neighbor's done, you know, like you can't like go to his what house. What did he Hollywood. say when he said, I'll shoot you? I guess the guy just fucking left. Like, I guess like the guy was like, yeah, I fucking wish you would. Like it was one of those, like, I wish of all people you would come onto my fucking property right now. Like, it's like that. Like on Halloween. Well, we got to tell people, there's, there's people like outside the country that watch it. Like, that's legal here in this country. You come on somebody's property, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You can just shoot them. <laughs> you feel threatened. If you come up with like a cake or something like that to welcome some to the neighborhood. Be like, well, how do I know that's not a bomb? You can shoot them, I believe. I think you can only kill them if they step in your house, not on your property. But what if you have one of those really nice yards? You just got it mulched. You can't kill him. he's coming up with his big stupid feet and he fucking, you know, kind of kicks some of the mulch into the walkway. You no, there was, there, there was a case where somebody killed somebody and dragged them in their foyer. So it was like, like you, you need somebody to step in your... <laughs> That's <laughs> like the catcher making a ball a strike. <laughs> That's perfect. Uh, that's per yeah. Like you need somebody to be in your house to step in to kill them, so they he could be on your. And then he dragged them in the foyer. There was like they have uh, by law you cannot shoot somebody if they're on your step, but if they take one step into your home and you shoot them, you have that you win that case because it's like look, he stepped in my house. I was threatened. He came into my home, but you can't. If somebody steps on your driveway, you can't just fucking off them. Not in this country, at least. Oh, you know. I didn't know that. Yeah. No, no. You, Do you can't have just... to know all of those laws before you buy a gun. Yeah. Dude, could you imagine if you could shoot somebody that stepped on your grass walking the dog? I mean, be oh, that's a good question. Though. Do you have to know those laws? Is there like a test you have to take before you buy a gun? Like you can't just fly a fucking plane. You got to know all this stuff about aerodynamics and physics and all of that shit. And then you got to take tests. You got to get a license. No, I bought a gun. Take, I bought a, get a check ride. Then you get a license. No, I bought a gun. I bought a uh, rifle 
And uh, I just had to like do like, like it was like a quick, like, am I mentally okay? Do I have a felony? You realize how fucked up that is? You can't, you can't just start driving a car. You have to learn all the rules to the road. Yeah. And you have to get, you, you don't have to take a gun safety thing so you don't fucking blow your goddamn foot off. No. No. You could go into Dick's Sporting Goods right now and buy a 12-gauge shotgun that could put a hole through a fucking elephant, and you just got to say that you're not a felon and have a license. <laughs> it's just as long as... But I like the felon thing. That's a good thing. Did you take a gun safety course? No. You, you don't have to with a rifle. You have to no, with a... Did you, though? No. I did, I'm a good shot. What do I... You see me shoot. I'm not. I'm a good shot. I know what I I'm doing. You shoot. Stop talking like you're fucking wide Earp. You sh me. You saw me shoot in Jacksonville. You even said I was a good shot. At a fucking target. Some right. big stupid fucking. You're making it sound like you've robbed a bank and you're fucking with a hero or some shit. <laughs> I've seen you shoot like you're fucking doing this shit at a goddamn carnival. You saw me shoot at a gun range. A gun range doesn't count. It's like telling jokes at your house. I'm a comedian. Yeah. <laughs> You've oh, seen dude. me shoot. If you go hunting and the fucking thing sees you, oh, fuck, and it's running away and you blow its brains out. I saw you shoot a paper fucking piece of paper. Yeah. Oh, you're a great shot, Paul. It was like, you know, 20 I'll tell yards you, you know, if they hang up a grizzly bear fucking <laughs> 20 yards away from you. And you got time to reload and put your thing on and go, yeah, you're a good shot. How do you do under pressure? Reggie Miller time. Three, two, one. How do you do then? You see me? I'm a good shot. You're out of your fucking mind, dude. If you buy a gun and you don't take a safety course and you don't fucking learn how to take that thing apart, every fucking God thing you think about, it, you're an asshole. Well, I do. I did do that with my cop friend. He taught me everything. We went to the range together and I did that. I basically did that. He took me there. I yes. No, basically it didn't. No, you I hung did. out I don't with a cop who told you some shit. You remember 40% of it. I listen, I, oh, I, I get it. I get it, Paul. You didn't do well in school. The thought of getting a booklet, even if it's something that you're into. You got to realize, Paul, school is not who you are. No. I'm School not makes you learn a bunch of shit you don't want to learn. So then you get it into your head that you don't like learning and you don't like reading. You're into guns, Paul. I like, like guns. I like so you reading. like to read some literature. You, if you read the literature, it'd be interesting. No, I disagree. I disagree. I disagree. And I give you, 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 you. This is right here. This is your classic gun owner right here. No, I'm very responsible. That's a good shot. I went down the fucking. I went down to the down by the target. They got a, they got some sandbags and a couple piece of paper. I went down there. I, sh I talked to a cop. Went to the range one time. Yeah, I'm a fucking expert. No, I've been to the range multiple times. I know how to take the gun apart. I keep the ammo away from the gun in my home. I know. I listen, man. I this know what I'm doing. This is all basic bitch shit. Yeah, but that's that's what what do you want me to do? I'm what, what, I'm not gonna sit and I I, I I would fucking become a master, a master of a with a fucking twenty two. I got like a glorified BB gun. What are you gonna be a oh, master? Yeah, can I shoot you in the foot with it? What do you mean? It would hurt. But like, yeah, what but I'm saying, do you want me to do that? No. No, but like, are you well, saying owning a gun is a fucking responsibility. It's not it's my fucking god give it right. You know, that fucking bullshit. Yeah, and then you should fucking know what you, you're doing with it. You don't hang out with a cop for a fucking afternoon. You got kids. Now, do I know what I'm doing with my gun? I'm oh, good geez, with my bro. gun. Oh, you just told me. You just started talking shit like you were Joe Montana of the fucking rifle ridge. <laughs> hey, yeah, you, you've seen me shoot. Like I, I was supposed to pick I was supposed to pick up the legend of Paul Verzi right there. Oh yeah, man, you gotta see this guy. Whoa. We were in Jacksonville one time <laughs> doing a weekend at the Comedy Zone. And whoo, I don't think I've ever seen a guy shooting a fucking piece of notebook paper with a guy drawn on it like this guy did. I was actually standing there like, why does this guy do comedy? <laughs> he should. 
I, I, I mean, if they don't pick you to be the next James Bond and let you do your own fucking stunts with real bullets, I mean, I think whoever owns that franchise is making a huge mistake. Listen, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. However, however, to sit here and say that if you bought a rightful, you'd become a fucking a rifle? 22 rifle, a 22 that you'd become some fucking master. It's like it's a 22, man. You keep the fuck. You learn how to fucking clean it. You learn where this, you know, all of the safety things with so the unless gun. Unless you buy a 44 Magnum, you don't really need to know how this gun works. No. No, but it's a 22 rifle that anybody could buy, and it's kind of fucking basic. There was literally a fucking soccer mom who showed me how to clean it in the fucking dicks. And when the mob used to whack people, what would they, what would they always use? <laughs> uh, a 22, two behind the ear. <laughs> yeah, two behind the ear. Clean. One that does the job and one to make sure. Yeah, he goes, you know. He goes, a 22 rattles around in the brain, then you die. He goes, a 45 blows the barn door off the back of your head. Uh, oh, you, you don't have a gun, Bill? I don't answer these questions. Oh, okay. I don't read from my playbook so people know what they are. Put it this way. I might, I might not. Well, but put if it I did, I took a gun safety course and learned everything I could possibly learn about the, the gun that I bought. Put it that way. You don't just buy, it's just a 22. All it's going to do is fucking blow a few fingers off. <laughs> I just pictured a bunch speaking of mobs. Speaking of which, speaking of fucking which, uh, I do have to commend you, Paul. The, the level of fireworks that you have at your house and you still have all your fingers considering these fucking people every goddamn year. Dude, there was a guy in the Columbus Blue Jackets got killed. 24-year-old goalie took a mortar to the chest. It's like, dude, that's why I, that's why I, I don't do mortars and I don't want to do mortars, man. Cause mortars. What, can what, what are mortars? So mortar is basically like, if I got to look up a picture of it. Let's what, say what this, it? let's say that this, this is actually thick, but let's say that this is a tube picture, this tube a little thinner and it's fucking like, you know, maybe like this, you drop, you literally drop in something a shell that's like that thick that has a long wick you drop it uh, in the tube you light it and then it goes up the problem with those is if the table's wobbly if it's not bolted down or taped down and that thing fucking turns and sometimes the as the fucking ign as it's ignited the air and the pressure that sends it up can make it fucking bend so i've did it at the house out of all the years a couple times i had it too we had it duct taped i don't like it i like the cakes the cakes are just boxes like this that are heavy. You put obviously the right side down, you light it and you fucking run and it's nine to 12 rockets. That's what the fuck you do. These guys with these fucking tubes and rockets. Some and fucking idiot, you know, put it the wrong side down. Uh, oh God. No, Dude, my gotta... favorite thing to watch. You ever watch those, those people Thanksgiving, the deep fryers, and they deep fry a turkey and they burn their fucking house down. First of all, they're on a wood deck. And what they do is, is, is they fill the oil all the way up to the top, not realizing that the turkey takes up space. It's like getting into a bathtub and the water comes up. It's up. The yeah. oil goes yeah. up over the side and then hits that open flame. And then they put water on it, which you don't do for a grease. <laughs> they just send it. And just the agonizingly slow way that that fire quickly just grows into something. Um, I mean, I don't want to see somebody burn down their house, but watching people like there's no uh, like that's the type of thing. Like if I was ever doing that, I do that in the middle of my driveway. OK, and I would just have sand all around the fucking thing. So if, God forbid the oil uh, got over the side. I would do something to be yeah. ready. Yeah. Instead, all of a sudden, be I grab the garden hose. You stand there and flip flops with a fucking two gallon grease fire on your fucking wooden back porch. Um, what Willis Whalen, our friend, he does a fried turkey. Oh. So wait, what do you do? What do you do with a grease fire? Then you got to put sand on it. Well, usually in the kitchen, it's like fucking, it's like baking soda. You want to smother it. Yeah. You don't want to put water on it because oil and water don't mix. And I think it just sort of pushes it along. I don't yeah. know. But like with that shit, dude, you have like, you know, it's like a keg of fucking oil. 
that is God knows how many fucking degrees. Yeah. <laughs> Stick his fucking bird in and the oil rises and it goes right over the side. These people have like an open flame. Um, yeah, guy I know, he does them in his driveway, way down in his, his driveway is a hill. Bottom of the driveway, away from everything. And then he, he's he got stuff that he can throw on, like some dirt he could just throw on it the yeah. second it would. Yeah, it's I kind saw of an people... easy thing. It's kind of an easy thing to put out. But it's also an easy thing to get horrifically out of control. Like you shouldn't have any leaves, any grass, anything flammable around it. It just goes onto the, the concrete of the asphalt. And then hopefully, you know, you got a wheelbarrow full of some shit that you can just dump onto it and you're good. Yeah, uh, I saw somebody do it at a campsite. And they just did it on the ground. They did it on the grass and the dirt. And there was shit there to put it. Doing it on a deck is ridiculous. Uh, but, dude, I, I, actually, I actually get very weird during the fireworks where – I tell people like, we're not fucking doing that. Like, Oh, let's do this. Or like, you know, we, a couple of people like let's have mortars going the whole time the cakes are going. And I go, no, because that means somebody needs to stand there, light them and drop them in. And we're not doing that. Like, we're not fucking doing that. Like nobody knock on wood, nobody's been hurt here. And it's because we just keep it simple. We do it with the cakes that can't fucking tilt. And that's it, man. It's like, I'm not fucking losing somebody or getting my fucking hand blown off, dude. Fuck that. Fuck that, man. One guy put the Nothing tube in. Nothing fucked up a 4th of July fucking party like killing one of the guests. Oh. And then the thing fucking tips over. Did you ever see the guy put the fucking tube in his like zipper so it looked like his dick? And he's like going like this. And it's like coming out and then all of a sudden he like tripped and like set on fire and rolled around. He ended up being all right, but it was just one of those drunk assholes. And it's like, no, there was a kid a few years ago, took one of those mortar things and he had it, he, he tatted it on his head. And it was like a military level mortar and it just fucking, it, it just, he disintegrated. He became a firework. Like there was nothing left of him. I don't know what he had. Dude, Dude if you want to see something fucking insane, if you look up firework injuries and no. you see like hands and stuff, dude, it's just like, no, <laughs> it's just like, no, I'll tell you, you know what, what's funny is, uh, somebody I know got me some fireworks. All they got me was sparklers. <laughs> That's all they got me. Yeah. And it is so fucking dry out here. And I just have, you know, trees around my area and grass. I was just like, I was trying to think where I could do it and be relaxed. And I was just like, I'm not going to be the guy that burns down my street. In the middle okay. of your pool. It's the only place you can do it. You got to just... Even then. Even then. One of those little fucking things. That's what always happens. Some guy's smoking a cigarette and a little bit of ash catches the wind, lands on a shrub. And he's just sitting there like, oh, shit. Oh, 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 shit. And <laughs> yeah. Then a whole hill of people are fucking homeless out here. So, um, <laughs> yeah, dude, uh, we had like four days of monsoon rain and we were like, all right, we could go. If we don't, we just can't. We just not taking that chance, dude. So we, we, we had sopping wet. Everything was soaked and we were able to do oh, that's it. Good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. That's but a good thing. No, but yeah, man, I don't want to fuck. I'm not doing that like mortar shit. And when I saw that that kid, that kid in the NHL died, I was just like, you know, and he tried getting away. Rest his soul. It's fucking brutal, man. Fucking brutal. I can't, I can't imagine, like, you know, it's, it becomes a fucking war scene. Dude, Jason Pierre-Paul blew his fucking hand off. You know, luckily he was still able to play, but he blew his fingers off. Because, like, I don't, I don't know what happened. Are they throwing them? Because, I listen, I've done fireworks for seven years now. And luckily, knock on wood, no accidents, but nobody's going near anything. The wick is out. We're like bitches leaning back with the thing. We light them and we fucking, we leave. It's like, what are people doing? Do you remember those firecrackers when we were kids? The, the, was it the black ones or the red ones? One of them had a ridiculously fast wick. It was like you lit yes. it and threw it. Yeah. The red ones were fast. Jesus Christ. Lady fingers, right? They used to call them. Remember jumping jacks? Fucking Dude, just I, remember, I remember this kid in my, my neighborhood. We 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 were throwing fireworks at this kid, right? And he fucking lit the firecracker and he brought it back here and it blew up in his hand. 
Jeez, I just remember going, going like like nothing. It didn't break the skin, but the concussive force. He was like running it underwater, and uh, <laughs> I've I've always just been scared shitless of those fucking things. I hated. I I just not into them. It's like I'm, I I just knew how stupid I was, and then I had a low level of explosives, and it's just like uh, you know, even without this, I've done a lot of stupid shit. You know, falling yeah. off of cars. Dude. You know. Me right on the hoods of cars, fucking hammered with my friends, and then they're going and stopping and going and stopping. And then I go to hop off, not thinking, and I'm going backwards, and I crack my head on the pavement. I just remember seeing the 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 tire locked up as I was sliding in the snow and the gravel on the side of the road. Helix Sleep, Helix Sleep has a quiz that takes just two minutes to complete and matches your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattresses for you. Why would you buy a mattress made for someone else? I, I don't wouldn't. know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't uh, do that either. With Helix, you're getting a mattress that you know will be perfect uh, for the way that you sleep. Everybody's unique, and Helix knows it. So they have several different mattress models to choose from. They have soft, medium, firm mattresses, uh, great for cool uh, mattresses for cooling, you down if you sleep hot or even helix plus mattresses for plus size sleepers oh you big boy <laughs> you big boys could get nestled in <laughs> <laughs> i love the hot sleeper it's like what do you got a body on your brain man no. <laughs> hold somebody uh oh, they're gonna catch me <laughs> that's I, actually a cold sweat right oh dude i hey i was in a tent in 82 degrees i know what it's like to sleep hot if your wife is missing we have the mattress for you uh i took the helix quiz uh and love it me and my wife got the medium and uh it's been great it's been awesome getting unboxed videos from so many of you who also found the helix mattress of your dreams so if you're looking for mattresses you take the quiz you order the mattress that you're matched to and the mattresses come right to your door shipped for free you don't uh, yeah it's awesome uh you don't ever need to be banging to on mattress. that thing before the truck leaves the driveway yeah, <laughs> on your front step, you're like let's test this out, honey. Uh, I want the neighbors to watch. Let them watch. Uh, it's the meeting just... of. <laughs> <laughs> you're banging your wife. It's a medium cool. Um, uh, oh, just hot go... fucker. <laughs> All right, let's get through this. Before you we fat go. fucks I love this. All right, uh, just go to. <laughs> Just go to helixsleep.com slash better. Take their two minute sleep quiz uh, and they'll match you to the customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. They have a 10 year warranty and you get to try it out uh, for a hundred nights risk free. They'll even pick it up from you if you don't like it, but you oh. will. He Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. That's actually a really an insane deal. Uh, at hey, Helix, Paul, you can do a lot of damage to a mattress in a hundred nights. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Not if you're married, okay? Uh, at Helix, <laughs> at, at HelixSleep.com slash better. That's HelixSleep.com slash better for up to $200 off and two free pillows. Hey, I've been married 14 years. No worries. <laughs> I think it'll look like it just came out of the box, okay? All right, it's Butcher Box, everybody. Are you itching to get out for the outdoors? It's grilling season, baby. Get ready for that summer cookout. Luckily, today's sponsor, ButcherBox, believes everyone deserves high-quality, humanely sourced meat. ButcherBox couldn't be easier. Just sign up, select your box, and they ship it right to your door every month. And new members will get free bacon for life when they sign up. Who does not love free bacon? Pigs. I like it. Uh, Butcher Box is no longer is a no brainer. It's the best meat shipped right to my door, which means one less trip to the grocers. Options like 100% grass fed and, and finished beef, free range organic chicken, heritage pork, my favorite, wild caught Alaskan salmon. You don't know what they're going to do, Verzi, and sugar nitrate free bacon. It's the way meat should be. Butcher Box is the most affordable and convenient way to get healthy, humanely raised meat. 
uh, with butcher box, you can get the highest quality meat for around just six bucks a meal. And they even have free shipping nationwide, except for Alaska and Hawaii. Backed by popular demand, receive bacon for life. Right now, new members can get bacon for life when they sign up. Just go to butcherbox.com slash better to claim your bacon. That's a package of free bacon and every box for the life of your subscription when you go to butcherbox.com slash better, B-E-T-T-E-R. And it's all for fucking attention. Like, like me and my friend jumped out of like a two story fucking thing and his head banged into the house when we jumped and we're looking back going like we could have died. The dumb shit throwing like like just the dumbest, like jumping off of high things into the snow, thinking it wouldn't hurt. And like all of those things. And I realize now all of it was because of fucking some sort of needing to be cool, needing acceptance. You know, my mom moved me and I fucking wanted to get kicked out of school and I fucking hated it. Cause I had friends, I was playing football. I, girls liked me. And then she moved me up to the country and I was fucking devastated. So I took bottle rockets on the bus and I put them out of the back and I just started lighting them. So they'd fly at cars. <laughs> And I fucking did that. And they called me into the principal's office and they fucking knew they were like, they were like, my mom's like, he wants out of here. Like he wants out. That's why he's doing it. So they ended up just suspending me and uh, but the fucking my car son is going to burn this bus down if we don't get him out of this school. Yeah. And then I said, I'm not going to school. I said, you can't make me go to school. And they go, actually, at your age, they can't. There's something called like a pins petition where like they'll take you and send you somewhere. So you can't, if you're not of 16, you have to be 16 years old to drop out. Right. And at you go 16 to let you fuck your life up. Yeah. At 16, you could say, I'm done. Go get your GD or whatever. If you're 14, 15 and you refuse to go to school, they'll like send you some. So like I, I was against it. So I just had to accept it. Um, and uh, yeah, man. And I rebelled. I would drink because, because, like sports turn into drinking and hanging out and partying and doing stupid shit and trying to impress the older kids and older kids loved me my whole life. All my friends were older than me. Every one of my friends growing up was older than me because the older kids fucking lo loved me and the older kids loved me because they were like, dude, watch this kid. Watch this kid. This kid's fucking wild. I was a fucking moron. You know, I was a moron right. and I was doing older kid shit. So I would drink with them. You know, I, I would smoke weed and I'm like the young dick. I started dick. shooting smack, you know, no. <laughs> older people stuff. No. <laughs> I fake my ID so I could get an AARP card. I got in the movies half price. Dude, dude, I, here's a story for you. I'm driving drunk with three of my buddies in the car. Okay. I'm probably... Not drunk, buzzed, stupid at the time, 90s. Just like we had like two. I shouldn't have been driving. And I have a fucking chalked ID. My license is chalked and like bad chalked. Like, <laughs> like what does chalked mean? You oh, wrote it over the lamination or a chalk? Yeah, a chalked license is like you get the thing and you just try to make the number, but it's like, it's, uh, I remember my buddies who did it and be all peeled up on one side and they try to glue it no, back no we would have these pencils and they could find like tip pencils and they would get the color to match it and over the lamination they would try to make it look as good as possible dude hand to god this is a true story i'm thinking about my friends laughing right now we put i swear to god i'm driving and i'm buzzed and my buddy goes we're going we were going to a strip club we we're going to the strip club called uh smiles it was called <laughs> great name <laughs> and he goes he goes, uh, where is it? And he goes, go, go, make a left. So I put my blinker on left and I make a right. There's a cop behind us. Cop pulled us over. And my buddy starts going, it's over. It's over, dude. We're going. And I am fucking terrified. I have a chalked license. I've been drinking. I'm going to a strip club. I'm underage. And I got my friends in the car. Hand to God. Cop comes to the thing. He goes, where are you guys going? Everything like that, you know? And he's like, ah, man, you put your blinker on one way. You went the other way. I'm like, yeah, dude, I know. I go, I have one friend told me one way or the other. I'm so sorry, this and that. And he goes, where are you guys headed? And I go, honestly, man, we're going to the strip club. I swear to God. He goes, all right, man, be careful next time. Get out of here. Didn't ask for it. Didn't ask for it. 
He just he just saw that that happened, dude. And we always talked about the that. charmed life of Paul Bursey. Dude, do you know like what would have happened? Dude. I would have had I would have gotten a Dewey. I would have gotten a fucking they, my license was manipulated. So that's another fucking that's an I would have been fucked. There you go, kids. Honesty. Officer, we are going to go look at some titties. He gets yeah. lied to all day long. Yeah. All day long, and somebody just tells him the truth. I don't know. I used yeah. to, when I was like 19 or 20 before I turned, I used to do this thing, and it would work maybe 10% of the time. Someone would card me, and i just give them my real ID. So what they're doing is they're looking for a fake. Oh, okay. Because they're thinking there's no way. Obviously, whatever I'm going to hand you is going to say I'm of age. So every, like, one out of 10 guys wouldn't look. I mean, one guy was saying, like, fucking says you're 19 years old and i was just like oh yeah and he goes the fuck out of here <laughs> i was hoping you wouldn't notice i got the seal of commonwealth of massachusetts it actually worked i i got it to work like three times out of maybe i don't know about 25 times of doing it i used to like doing it just to see because it's like it's like one of those things that you know when you walk out of home depot and that person's checking the receipt and they just draw a line on it. Like they're not looking at everything in your cart once you bought too much no. shit. No. I was hoping I could get uh, with like that sort of mentality. Did uh did you were you a kid that got in trouble a lot or no? Um, class clown shit, but not like trouble trouble. I didn't like uh you know, there was it was a couple of things that I did or whatever, but like not um well, one thing, the cops were involved, but my friends covered for me because they weren't sure if there was two or three people in the car. And uh, one of the guys was the guy that went in the store. The other guy was his parents' car. Good friend. And I was the one, yeah, I was the one that pulled the kid into the car. <laughs> when they were chasing him out. Um, I'll never forget it, dude. Like this fucking fat lady chasing my friend out and he's fucking looking back at her like an idiot and then as we were driving away i remember her yelling out the license plate number wow. seven, seven, five, X, five, she's like i got it i got it <laughs> it's just sitting there going oh no <laughs> uh, i did shit that was so bad sometimes but then i did shit that was bad my mother my mother laughed at I did shit that was so fucking wild sometimes that my mother would laugh at the report as trying to d discipline me. And it was my favorite thing because like my mom and I went through some shit when I was younger and she would be like, I can't believe you fucking did this. And uh, I remember uh, one time I stole and I saw her on the surveillance coming, holding my little brother and sister. They were like fucking babies. And she's just walking one in one hand, one in the other. And she just walked in. She goes, somebody goes, dude, I never been caught stealing. I go, I never been fucking caught stealing. Let's go. And we go to fucking shop, right? And I'm putting fucking Newport cigarettes down my pants and shit. And the guy just fucking grabbed me and yanked me. But one time I made my mother laugh. We we're shooting spitballs at the fucking teacher in junior high. And they're just fucking hitting the, they're just fucking pinning the fucking chalkboard. <laughs> Just pinning it, right? He's going, all right. His name was Rest His Soul. His name was Mr. Hauer. Rest His Soul. Uh, actually, I shouldn't say, I don't know Rest His Soul. I'm imagining. But he was, you know, he's just like these big features, ears, everything. Guy looked like he was made out of clay. Right? He's dead. And, and he just. Uh, Some people you just can tell they're not, not going to make 60. And he just goes, oh, this was, dude, this was literally like 30 years. And he's going, who's? And he turns around. And me and my friends were just laughing. I'm in the back. Right? We spit, right? Dude. My mother has the report still in a box, I believe. He goes, I don't want anybody. And he talked real slow like that. He goes, I don't want anybody. I spit a spitball. I swear to God, it curved and stuck on his cheek while he was yelling at us. And my fucking friend Frankie flew out of his seat. Like everyone lost their shit. He goes, oh, <laughs> it was a fucking big <laughs> white spitball right here. And he's fucking yelling at me, dude, with it on. And then he finally got it off and I got to detention. And my mother was like, you did what? And she read like the, the write up. And my mother just, I don't know why. She just fucking bursted out laughing while she was yelling at me. She's like, you can't fuck. What are you, what are you nuts? It's stuck on his cheek. She just burst out laughing. <laughs>
but I was never a bad, but here's the thing. I was never a bad kid that disrespected elders. I was just a dummy. For a he was fucking spitting on this guy in front of the whole class. No, spit balls, dude. That's like kids. Yeah, but it's your fucking saliva on it. It's fucking nasty. I know, but dude, like, I, it was like the late 80s. Oh, we were yeah. first with the fucking gun safety, and now a spitball is not really spitting on a guy. I don't, I, you, I think a spitball for a sixth grader doesn't mean you're a bad kid. I think it means you're an asshole. You know what's weird? That, yeah, I, I actually agree with that. You're an you asshole. Know, high school level, then you're spitting on me. If you, uh, if you're uh, high school or college, put it this way: if you do a spitball in college, you should just. Yeah, you're, you're at a community college. <laughs> <laughs> There's no dorms. You drive. You drive to school, and then you drive to college, and you go home. <laughs> spitballs, uh, dude! I can't believe we're almost 50 minutes in. So let's talk about this uh, finals game one last night. No, we're Did 40 you... minutes. We started 207. We're 40 minutes in. Oh, okay. Come on, Paul. Come on, right, Paul. I, I know I you didn't do spitballs the whole fucking time. I got it. Uh, talk about it, man. The Phoenix Suns and the Milwaukee Bucks. I love it. I love it. The pylon teams, they got injured. They had no fucking heart, and they're out. They're out. Yeah, but, dude. They'll be back next year, but, you know. I think the Suns, man, like, uh, it's going to be tough, dude. Bucks look bad. Defense look bad. Suns looked fast. Suns just had a lot of playmakers. They're on the same page, better coached. Well, listen, Paul. I got to tell you this. I've watched my team in the finals a lot. So I'm, you've never seen your team in the finals. Mm -hmm. Once? Yes, I have. 99. How old are you? And 94, twice. How old are you? I'm in, um, what? How old are you? I'm, I'm 42. <laughs> oh, you got issues with your age. All right, Paul, he's 39. No, no. I, in I just... four decades, you've seen it twice. I remember, like, in 84... The Lakers kicked the shit out of us. And we just, they looked like they were going to sweep us. And then Larry Bird said we played like a bunch of sissies. And then they closed line Kurt Rambis back when you could do some shit like that. And then we won it. Still took us seven games. And then I remember the next year in 85, we played them. It was the exact same thing. Like both teams like won by like 25 or 30. Both game ones were a blowout. And the team that got blown out came back and won. So came back and won the series. Yes. I wonder what that percentage is. Losing game one of the finals, who wins that series? I wonder what that would be because. I don't I know understand what, how that, th those percentages, what they have to do, unless it was the exact same people playing. And then you factor in age because they're a year older. Like when they sit there and they go like, you know, they, uh, you know, whatever, they're, they're 12 and two when it's fucking over 70 degrees and fucking blah, blah, blah. It's just like historically yeah. when they go historically, I can see if you're talking about a specific team, like this year, they play better on grass than they do on turf. Even if there's any turf left, I get that because it's, it's the same yeah. team pool, but now you're just talking about it and you start going historically, you're just talking about a uniform, the people that wore this uniform or yeah. if you're talking about the final or whatever. I, I never get into that because you can't m measure uh, – it's good. I mean, there's all these factors. Coaches, heart, you know, the level of drive of the best player on the fucking team is something that yeah. can turn it around. I don't think it's like a mathematical thing. I also always hated that thing where it's just like, you know, you the first two games are your, in your building, and then they, they win, you win game one, they win game two. It's like, oh, now they got home court. Now they, well, yeah, if you start counting now. Right, right. Yeah, the only like people go all bad things happen in threes. It's like, no, you stop after three and go back to one. You could say bad things happen in 18s. Just <laughs> hang around. Yeah. See, told you. There's 18. Now we're starting over again. Yeah. I think the only time the percentage works is when it's three games, which is obvious. You know, that that's a statistic that holds. If you're down three games to O, uh, you know, with the exception of the Red Sox, I know. But the, the, no, 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 no. The, the Flyers did it to the Bruins. It's happened right. a couple of times in hockey. Hockey, the, you're for some reason, I was just talking about this. Simone Gagne came back for the Flyers and David Krejci got hurt. And it was just that tip of the scale, man. And they went on a fucking run and just sm fucking smoked us four straight games. 
Yeah. That was it. I don't then know. Next year, we won the cup and the Flyers are still waiting. So it, it had a happy ending. <laughs> I don't know, man, why people say things like that. Like Joe Torre always said game two and five of a series were the most important. Hey, that's a guy that won five. So I don't know, but he always said that. I don't know. I would go with what Joe Torre says over what a stand-up comedian says. So don't listen to me. I'd listen to Joe Torre. But I would love to have him on if he's watching. Yeah, but what about – oh, that would be great, dude. I uh, I actually – dude, I stood next – I was in a stop and shop with him or a supermarket, and he's in front of me. And he's literally – he literally, like, was a retired already, and he's in front of me, and I'm putting my items on, and he's there. And she goes, do you have your card? Like, you know, the card that they sweep? He goes, no, I don't have it on me. And I go, I mean, you could, you, you could use mine. <laughs> you just use mine. And he was just, but I, he had, he was going through like uh, chemo and shit at the time. He looked like he looked all, t- he had prostate cancer, oh. I believe. Well, he was going to Sloan Kettering. He's, already, no, no, he's, he's still alive. He's still alive. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No. Um, I always wanted to ask him when you guys would be in those big games, those big game situations, and he would just be sitting there like stoic. No emotion on his face, hand in his pocket. Don Zimmer, rest his soul, sitting next to him. Um, Like, I always wanted to ask him, like, internally, was your stomach doing somersaults? And by the way, dude, how fucking cool would it have been to sit with him and Don Zimmer and talk baseball? Like, people who are really into baseball. And Don Zimmer essentially was the history of baseball. Like, I played on... Yeah, he played on the 55 Brooklyn Dodgers that finally got through the bums and, and won a title. He, he played uh, during, like, during Willie Mickey and Duke Schneider. He played during that era and uh, went right into coaching, was in baseball 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and into the 2000s. I think six decades. Like, I think he has to be in the Hall of Fame as, like, an ambassador, right? But the Hall of Fame is just so fucking... Like the, the, yeah, it's, you can become a test pilot easier than getting the, the baseball hall of fame. It seems. Yeah. Especially during that gap we watched because they, there's guys that just aren't getting in that deserve to be in and the writers just won't give it to a guy, you know, Barry Bonds and a rod. I don't understand how the, 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 the cunty writers, the guys not picked in gym class. I know. But then like part of getting into the hall of fame is you have to be nice to them after yeah. your interview, or else they might get petty. I'm not voting for that fucking guy. You know what he did to me one time when I was working in Cincinnati? Yeah. I don't know what he did, but I saw what he did to the fucking baseball. That's why Mariano Rivera is the only baseball player in history to get a unanimous Hall of Fame, which means which means Derek Jeter didn't, which means, uh, you know, uh, all these guys didn't. How is Derek Jeter not unanimously in? He wasn't. He wasn't because somewhere well, along the line. What was the knock against him? Well, he probably fucked the guy's girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> gave her a gift bag better than anything this guy ever got her for Christmas. Yeah. He just gave her on a random Tuesday. Hey, go, sweetheart. You never know. You could have one of those nerdy fucking writer's wives go, oh, Derek, I see how the ladies like him. Next thing you know. <laughs> done fucking seriously that shit happens but uh well in defense of sports writers like that also happens with like nfl commissioners when they get a bug up their ass about your fucking team or something it's just it's just how it is people when people in power get you know if you're a person in power and you let your emotions get to you how funny is that me when I can't control his emotions um yeah like you can really i don't know you're gonna you can affect some shit put it that way yeah, it's, it's, I, uh, how big was the setup of that statement and then just sort of trickled away? <laughs> it's nothing. I'll tell you, if you're a person of power, you get the emotion. And- so, Bill, are you Something saying, happened. are you saying, Bill, that even though the Milwaukee Bucks defense looked terrible in game one and the Suns had control of that game, the Milwaukee Bucks are going to win this thing? I'm saying they absolutely could. Okay. I mean, this is the Phoenix Suns we're talking about here, people. It is true. Yeah, they. I mean, you know, they almost lost to the Clippers. Yeah, Andrew, you got to be going for the Greek, the 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 original Greek freak. You got to be going for Giannis. Yeah, I mean, I just I like Milwaukee anyways more than I like the Suns. I haven't liked the Suns since Steve Nash. So I kind of really like both teams. 
I like really like both teams, but if I had to pick a city, like Milwaukee is one of my favorite cities in the country. Milwaukee is is one of the best comedy crowds I've ever been around. Uh, is the best. So best uh, I love steam room, the brats, the fuck, the fucking uh, champagne of beers. They got their headquarters right there. You're right on Lake Michigan, just like Chicago, without all the traffic. Milwaukee's so great. Remember that cigar thing? They opened it. It was it was incredible. I used to like the, the sun. Steam, until, the best steam I've ever fucking been in. I mean, that was beyond a steam. That was fucking. Oh, I gotta plug this puppy in. That was fucking nuts, dude. That steam. They gave you a a glass room with mm -hmm. like a bed in it. <laughs> it was nuts. And they had that old school shower. You just pulled the thing down. Ah oh, man. Yeah. I Remember, I'd go in that shower. Ah, ah, dude. I couldn't handle. I don't know how you guys didn't fuck. Uh, Burr and Bartnick and all these guys, they would go in the ice cold and you wouldn't hear a peep. It was ridiculous for me. It was like torture. It was, it was, it was so cool. I was going, ah, oh, dude, I dreaded I forgot it. that. We used to always go on the road and then we would, you know, me and Bartnick would go to gym, to the gym, and then Versi would show up for the steam afterwards, right? That's basically what it was. And then we would take his steam. He'd be like, yeah. no, dude, I'm eating good. I'm eating good. I'm having a salad. I'm eating good. We take a steam. And then, like, afterwards, they, you know, you're supposed to take a cold shower because all, all the toxins are sitting on your skin. And, and you know, they'll, you'll absorb it like a sponge back in and sort of negate a lot of the steam. Right. So you're supposed to take an ice cold shower. And, dude, you would always get in that. I just hear you down the, down the thing just going, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Me and Barnick would just be laughing. I would I count mean, to 10. It was so 10. cold and uncomfortable for me, but I just willed yeah. myself not to make I was, you were expressing what I was feeling anyway. But Barnick's like a great white shark. I think he actually likes cold water. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. Uh, dude, I used to like the Phoenix Suns until Stacy was five months pregnant with Lucas. And a guy bumped into her trying to get a T-shirt. And we, I almost fucking killed him. It was really bad. It was the day Obama got inaugurated. The, the, the first time he got elected, he got inaugurated. And we went to the Knicks game. And she's five months pregnant. And they threw a T-shirt from the cannon. And I actually caught it in my hands. And this drunk asshole jumped, knocked it out of my hands, made it fall forward. And he bumped into my pregnant wife. And, dude, there was fucking tension. And then the only thing I'll give him is during like the next five minutes, he like leaned over and like tapped her, tapped her like, and just goes like, you okay? Like, I'm sorry. Like he did it on his thing. Cause he didn't want me to see. And then we had this like stare down as he left. And there's like Italian guy behind us. He goes, Oh, oh easy, easy guys. Easy guys. You know, Obama, he was like being sarcastic. And Obama got elected. Let's keep everything nice. <laughs> well, that must have been his second time. Obama got in in 09. Obama so was, it your, was was it your was it with your your first Obama. kid? If it was with no. your first kid. There's Lucas. Oh, it was your first kid. Oh, I thought she you was, she was that. five months pregnant with Lucas. It was 08. 08. Oh, Jesus. It was 08 against the Suns. But I, I you know, it's hard to put that against the Suns. You know, it's hard to make a it's hard to not like a team because a guy bumped into my wife. Like, <laughs> like billion blood, Paul. I'm sure you can make you can find a many reasons. Yeah, it sticks. I'm trying to work that out, man. I want to work that out in my life. I just don't know if I can work what out. I want to work. I It's almost like a curse, dude. I got a family member. I'm going to tell you something. I got a family member who told me something once and it hit me later why they told me. They told me somebody. All right, I'm going to try to put this into I'm going to try to say this like a like a put the pieces of a puzzle together. Somebody told me once I was at, I was at a gathering. I was at a home for a party at night and people are drinking wine, having a good time. And some guy walked in and the guy walked in and he's like looking around and he's like, where's so-and-so? And he's asking for the host of the party. Right. And it was a woman. He's like, Oh, where's so-and-so? And he walked in way too, way too like, I already don't like this guy. I get what you're saying. Go ahead. He's coming. Hey, we're so, so like one of these, you know, and it's Jersey, you know. So uh, he Strike goes to New Jersey. <laughs> Paul Jersey, not a fan. Hey, dude. 
no, 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 no. So uh, I'm with this woman later at another date. And it's at, we're at a gathering. And she goes, hey, remember that guy that came in to my, don't mention, don't mention anything because they like them. They're friends with them. And it made me realize what it really was. What it really was, was that guy was fucking her. Because you don't walk into a house like that. I know for a fact that, and I've never found out confirmation. Wait, but I know back I, up a second. I was thinking about Leslie Nielsen going strike two. Woo, woo, woo. So wait, how did you figure this out? Listen, guy walks into her house. Guy walks into a house. Guy walks into her house. Now this woman, I knew this woman. This woman was, this woman was uh, somebody associated with my family. And she was, you know, in a relationship at the time. And this guy, other guy, walks uh, into this party, uh, real. Okay. and he's and he's walking in like, "Hey, what's going?" And he and a man does not go into a woman's house when she's with another man and behave that way, unless they're either super super close, related, or something's going on. But then what confirmed it for me was I was at another gathering, and she said to me, "Hey, remember that guy? Yeah, don't say anything bad about that guy because they're all friends with him." But what it really was was. It was because that that I knew what that meant. And what that meant was, in my opinion, I, I don't have confirmation. How did they know that you knew? Huh? How did they know that you knew? Uh, because I was just like, I said something like, dude, what was with that guy who walked into that house acting like that? Like, that guy was a typical drunk asshole. Like, I was kind of vocal about the guy's behavior. But then I put it together. I go, oh, I see. I see. How old were these people? And that poor bastard, and that poor bastard she was living with had no fucking idea uh, that she was that she was dating. Had no fucking idea that this guy's coming in. But that's the Sicilian gene. I could see it all. I could see it all. I've been a good constant. I would have been a good Don. A little emotional though. You'd been a better Don because you. I would have been more like. Oh, you're too nice to be a Don. I would have been like. So you'd been like. You would have been like Michael. Quiet. Closed door, you know. I would have been a little bit hot headed if I was a doc. I, 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 I do not have the stomach for that fucking shit on any level. So, how old were these people? Uh, let's say 40s. Yeah. And she worked with them, I think. And I just realized. Was he drunk? I couldn't tell. Just an asshole, dude. It's hard to differentiate drunk or jersey because it's similar. <laughs> wow that he, guy just coming in with that energy he had that energy of like something you don't go into someone's house like that i remember being like whoa like He's looking also, in yeah it's like um, looking in rooms and shit yeah oh yeah. he was familiar he was familiar yeah yeah it opens felt like the fridge knows right where the orange juice is shit like that what is this guy but with arrogant but with arrogance to it like it wasn't even that and then hearing hey don't mention anything about that because everybody kind of likes then i was like oh i get it and nobody to this day knows that i know that so i'm i'm, I'm i, I know do. well i mean i i used no names i said somebody in a relationship you know what nobody knows if they know what could i do you know what i mean Wait, should I we take the only this out? People that would know would would be the po people that already knew. Yeah, we don't need to take this out, right? No, no, we don't need to take this out. Right. No, 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 because none of those I'm people. I would be more concerned about you talking shit about that fucking lunatic up the street from you. That's a problem in the neighborhood, dude, and I don't want my children or anybody involved with it. So, you know, you got how funny some, if he's just an angry asshole? You got, I mean, you can have a good time with that guy. I'm going to walk Lloyd over there after this podcast, see what's going on. Dude, you got to send them balloons anonymously. Oh, my God. Yeah. He's got a uh, Lexus. He's got a Lexus truck, so we got that in common. So I'll maybe just be like, hey, dude, what year is that? Dan? It's a beaut, you know? Be like, I got one. It's a 2000. Go fuck yourself. I should put my phone out and record and just be like, hey, man, how you doing? Beautiful truck. We got a Lexus, too. You enjoy it? And just have him be like, go fuck yourself. <laughs> Dude, I want to see that and just make a whole bunch of clips called Angry Neighbor. <laughs> uh, hey, Mark, the lawn looks great. Fuck you. 
Yo, man, I'm, no, he's not even close to me. Happy birthday. Get the fuck off my lawn. You just got to. <laughs> yeah, dude, this is a problem, man. But he's not close to me. Thank God. He's he's not close to me. What would make you that antisocial? Dude, he had people show up with a cake saying, oh, welcome to the neighborhood. And he goes, I don't do that here. Just get off my property and don't ever talk to me when you see me. I mean, I always respect somebody that knows what they want and they say it, but that is just like, no, dude, that's something's wrong with that. I think there's a mental something's wrong with that. This dad, you know, <laughs> no, but I mean, something like, happened. I mean, who's the biggest asshole you ever met? Still wouldn't do that. The biggest dickhead you would know, the biggest asshole you ever met in your life wouldn't go. Hey, man, just don't ever talk to me. Get off my like that's up. I think there's an antisocial something's like there's an issue mentally. I think I'm, I think it's an illness. I don't know. You're going out on a limb there, Paul. Um, yeah. I think uh, it, I want it to be biggest asshole I ever met. I mean, there's like so many like I got to like you got to catch this. The passive aggressive. Passive aggressive ones. Uh, and then there's the women assholes who are just a whole other category because you can't even hold them accountable. Right. But none of those assholes would do what he did. Not one of those assholes would go, Hey, I don't care about the cake or neighbors. Just get the fuck out of here. Never talk to me. Yeah, that reminds me of that character in stripes. Uh, Francis, the psycho. <laughs> oh yeah. It's been a while. You wow. call me psycho. Yeah. You guys call me Francis and I'll kill you. Another thing, I don't like being touched. Any of you homos <laughs> start touching me, and I'll kill you. I think that's who you got. You got Francis moved in up the street. Yeah, he's, dude, he looked, he freaked me out the way he looked. Because we drove by, and he just had, like, this black hair, and he was just holding the hose on his lawn. And he was just, he was just staring there like the killer Michael Myers as he was mowing. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with this guy. I don't know dude, what the you just got to drive by laughing at him. But you also, dude, you have no idea. This guy could be ready to fucking snap, you know, and just let him pick another. Let him pick a different house. Yeah, we're far. Enough. I love that other guy. Go ahead. Step on your property. My property. I'll fucking shoot you. That other guy was like, yeah, because I think everyone in the neighborhood, not one person. Everybody knows. They're like, dude, you hear about that? Like, like it's almost like it's almost like, you know, he's like the dog in Sandlot. Did you ever see Sandlot with all the kids yeah. were, where they were all afraid of? Like, that's what this is just a human form of like, you go by his house. Like, did you see him? Did you catch Dude, there, him? There's a story about a guy that was such a fucking asshole. I believe it was in Missouri that the whole town was so sick of this guy. Intimidating people and like doing shit, assaulting people and all of that, that basically these two guys or three guys killed him. And the whole town agreed to keep their mouth shut, and they did. And they can't solve it, and they know that somebody in the town killed the guy. And that's still real right now? Yeah. Wow. Oh, wait Let me look that up real quick. Uh, town keeps mouth shut after wow. murder. That's fantastic. I want to say it was Missouri. There must be a movie about that. I don't think it is. I can't spell Missouri. Town you for 30 years about a bully's killing. No, nope, this is New York. Wow, I guess a lot of towns can keep their fucking mouth shut, dude. There's a yeah, whole yeah. bunch. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. Skidmore, Missouri. No one saw a thing. It was, I think, the name of the... Uh... Wait, is this a movie? Uh, I got it right movie. here. The Murder of Ken Rex... Mac McElroy took place in plain of a view of dozens yeah. of residents of this small farm town. You don't want to fuck with farmers, dude. No, dude. Their tools can either feed you for life or take your life. Uh, under the glare of the morning sun, but in a dramatic act of solidarity with gunmen, every witness save the dead man's wife denied seeing who had pulled the trigger. The killing was a shocking end for a notoriously brutal man who had terrorized the era for years with seeming impunity from the law until he was struck down in a moment of vigilante justice. 
It was also the first major case of a young county prosecutor not far removed from law school, just months into the job, who said he was confident that the case would be solved. But silence of the townspeople held. Now, nearly 30 years later, that prosecutor, David A. Braird, is preparing to leave office with his first and most famous case still unsolved. Wow. Last paragraph. No one has ever been brought to trial in Mr. McElroy's death. And although there is no statute of limitations on murder, most people around here suspect that no one ever will be. I mean, dude, that guy's like an asshole's asshole right there. If you're dude. such an asshole, the whole town agrees to look the other way when you're murdered. And not because they're worried about ratting you out because you're such an asshole. That's amazing. Yeah. I bet you the guy that did it just... Yeah, if I was a detective who's getting free beers at the bar, the guy walks in, goes like that. You know that the guy who did it is like, uh, thinks he's the shit, you know, <laughs> gets drunk. He's like, yeah, nah, because you got to live with it, dude. Yeah. You still have but, to live with the fact you took somebody's life. And then you got to sit there, if you're a religious person, be wondering yeah. how that plays out. Because I bet whoever did it right now, it's like, man, he would have been dead by now. I should just let nature take its course. Can I kind of let my emotions get the best of me? <laughs> for, but for a whole town to say nothing, knowing that, because I bet you they all are religious in a farm town. And for that guy, they must have looked at that guy literally like the devil, dude. For a whole town, women, men, everybody. You know, probably kids heard stories collectively at night. as a group break the fifth commandment. <laughs> Dude, that's like that guy must have been fucking into some heavy. They did that movie about those women that one woman was getting raped and she killed a guy and put him in the trunk and she fucking threw him in the water. She threw him off a cliff in the water. And then everybody started realizing that that guy was raping everybody and the whole town knew who did it and they just let it go. It was like kind of this, a similar thing, but I didn't know that that was real. I didn't know that that was real. The shit that you said. That's fucking what town? Missouri? Yeah, it was someplace in Missouri. Uh, wow, man. Skidmore. Skidmore, Missouri. Holy shit. What year? Whether... Well, it was 30 years ago. I don't know what year that was written. 82, um, I think it happened. 82. So now it's like 40 years. Holy shit, man. That's why you always tip the wait staff. <laughs> I'm trying to think of like the biggest asshole I ever met. And I, I the biggest asshole I ever met, I, I don't, I think it's hearing this guy. I think it's hearing this neighbor. I think this is the one that like I've. It's like it's about an hour and a half north of uh, Kansas City. Could you imagine being like, hey, man, dude, somebody lost a dog up here. You didn't happen to see like a black lab running around and he turns his back and crosses his arms and goes, go fuck yourself. That's like some fucking next. Like, like I don't I do. That's why I'm intrigued. Like, I'm intrigued. I know. I, but curiosity killed. I, I'd be honest with you. I've been joking on this part. I'd stay away from that guy. Yeah. 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 No, that's what my wife said. My wife said, especially with this podcast on record, then it's just like, ah, and he was talking about it a week before. Like, you know, you know, <laughs> no, I don't, I don't, I just want to find out. Yeah, he asked for it. He said he was going to walk the dog by. He didn't even live right there. No, I'm not going to walk the dog by. Might have been with fuck, and then I, I get called to testify. Yeah. No, it was I'm a just... joke. We were joking around. I mean, was... he's got to walk his dog somewhere. Why did he have to go up the block? Why didn't he go down the block? Listen, he's not on my block. I want nothing to do with this guy. I just do want. I, I will want say to go to his house. No, I will say this though. I will say that if I if I found out the guy yelled at my kids, I'm going to say something. That's all. You don't yell at my fucking kids because you're a fucking mentally ill psychopath. You know what I mean? Because you know, Paul, I don't give a fuck. All right, right. You're saying too much here, Paul. Yeah. So, anyways, All um, listen. This has been another great episode. <laughs> hey, listen. Does anybody have neighbors that you want to write in? If you have, if, if you guys want to write in about a crazy. But here's the thing, dude. And this is why, when I looked at real estate, I told my wife I wanted to be even more secluded. The house that I lived in, Stacy was like, Paul, like if we got hurt, it would take us. Like I wanted to be fucking away, dude. I was like, on, there was a hill. It was like far, and Stacy's like, dude, I don't want to do that. I know we'll get a dog. We'll fuck. And she's like, Paul, we're like, we have no neighbors here and we didn't do it. But there's something to be said about seeing fucking nobody seeing nobody. 
I don't want to be around. I don't want to see any fucking body because I don't know how sick and mentally fucked up these people are. People are fucked up, man. They are. And I don't want to be around them. And I don't want my fucking kids to be around them. I don't want my dog to be around them. I don't want anything I love being around that sickness. You know what I mean? Maybe your neighbor thinks the same thing. And he's just a little further down that road. And I he mean, can't afford that piece of property in the middle of nowhere. So now <laughs> don't talk to me. Get away. I don't even see you. Where's the dog? Go fuck yourself. I think the funniest thing is holding a cake. I just think somebody, somebody came over with like a cake or a plate of cookies excited. Like excited. Or what if they baked it? Then you, but you know what's funny is then they got to eat it. Go back to the house and they're oh, eating no. it. Just remembering these are the cookies I baked for that fucking guy. You're having this sweet uh, treat that reminds you of this hey, asshole up the street. Hey, guy missed out. <laughs> this is a nice sponge cake. <laughs> Brutal. Yeah, man. Like, I don't know. I you don't need know, to man. figure out a way to get him to need to talk to you just so that you can say, like, have the mailman tell him, like, some important mail went to your house. And then when he comes to your house, just be like, I don't want to talk to you. And <laughs> just How do it. How funny he would it be if he was at my Fourth of July party next year? Like, ah, I was, <laughs> this guy's great. I don't know what the fuck everyone was talking about. <laughs> I get it. I get it. He doesn't want to fucking. <laughs> No, I yeah, then I, I woke up. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, go fuck yourself. <laughs> That's the guy. That's the guy. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like that guy sounds like he, I don't know, like prison or some shit. Something did that. I, I wouldn't fuck with that guy at all. No, uh, I actually one guy said he saw him one time somewhere out in public, actually being decent. So, like, I wanna, I I, you know, who knows? Who knows? But as far as neighbors go, he just doesn't want to be involved with neighbors. He doesn't want you near his house or his lawn. Get the dog. I want Lloyd to take a shit on his fucking lawn. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. I'm, I, I, you listen, my wife yelled at me. She was right. I don't need that in my life. No, you don't. I don't need that in my life. But it was so funny. Watching Especially this, after this podcast. Watching this Italian kid walk up his lawn with a, with a fucking horn. Oh, it was so fucking great. It was just so great. Um, but I'm going to say, let's, let's do, uh, let's do picks here. Let's do picks. Okay. okay. Yep. Giannis is healthy. He got 20 and 17 last night, which is a great line actually. Um, I think do the bucks, you want to take the Suns and I'll take the bucks or what do you want to do? No, I want to take the bucks. I like Milwaukee. That's my city, man. I love that place. And, you know, I can't bet against them because I, I, I don't want to see. I'm not a fan of. Oh, but you're 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 a Greek. Yeah, it's hard. You gotta, all right, all right, all right, all right. But you don't uh, have to. I'll, take the, I'll take the Suns from you know Larry Nance way back in the day. All those great Phoenix Suns. Um, who was it? Larry Nance. Who else? Well, Charles Barkley, Dan Marley. Was it KJ or something? What's the guy's name? Who's the guy? Uh, yeah, point guard. Said- Ooh, what about Cedric Sabalas? You remember Cedric Sabalas? No, but I remember Dan Marley. Dan Marley. Who was the other guy? Charles Chambers? Barkley. Tom Chambers. Tom you, Chambers. You remember Tom Chambers? All the C's. Calvert Chaney. Did he play with them? No. Um, who? Wait. Who was their? Uh, who was their point guard? Jackson or something? Uh, on the, those Barkley teams. Um, one of the premier point guards in the fucking league. Oh, KJ, Kevin Johnson. Yeah, yeah Kevin Johnson. It was KJ. I couldn't remember his name. Ke- Kevin John, dude, that team got to the finals in '93. Yeah, that team came. That team came fucking close, dude. That t- that was a that was that. Who beat them? Who beat Bulls. them in '93? Everybody, you, if you lost in the '90s, you lost to the Bulls. Except for those two years with except the uh, they, except '90 and '91, uh, '90. No, '90, the Pistons won. Yeah, but 90, 94, 95 was Houston, and then 99 was uh, the Spurs. But, I mean, the other six were the Bulls. Yep, Spurs, uh, the Sp- Bulls. Spurs beat my Knicks in five with Latrell Sprewell. That was Sprewell years. Yep, uh, the big uh, fundamental. Yep. Uh, the Celtics wanted him so bad. What a great player. What a great power forward. One of the best. One of the best, dude. I'd never seen a guy. What a hairline. What a fucking hairline. The guy's fucking hairline comes like down 
Or am I thinking Brad Doherty? Dude, both. Brad Doherty. Dude, both of them. It's like their their hairline it, it like goes down all the way down to here. It's just above the the eyebrows. You know what I want to do? I never got to do, man. I never got to go to NASCAR, and I was watching uh, something. I want us to do that, dude. I want to see those cars fly by. I would love to do that. Like I, I went to date. I went with Nate Bargatze. We went to the Daytona 500 in Talladega. Can you smoke? Hey, a wait, that's the fastest fucking track out there. Can you smoke a stick while you watch that? Uh, while you hold a pistol, I think. I'm not sure. It's fucking NASCAR, man. <laughs> hold a mortar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what would you do? Oh, uh, <laughs> give your life for freedom. Dude, dude racing I want to get fun, man. What? Tell me the ones a bunch of fucking, you know, aristocratic fucking people. You can have that if you want. If you like that whole thing, you can go all the way down to fucking dirt tracks and fucking lunatics, tractor pulls. There's fun to be had at all those things. And you can get fucking ripped and nobody gives a shit. I want to go to like a nice, like, nice, like some, something like you went to, like a Daytona 500, something like that. That would be nuts, dude. And just like bet on a car. You could gamble on that shit, right? Yeah, no, you bet on all. You that you do is you go there. Say that I don't know how many cars there are. If there's thirty cars, you got five people with you. You just draw out of a hat. Everybody gets six cars. Oh, dude, that's awesome. Yeah, and then then you come up with ways, like breaks in the race. Like you know, I would just if it's a five hundred mile race, I would break it down. Whoever's leading on the hundredth lap, fiftieth lap, just to keep it interesting. Yeah. This is a long fucking time, dude. And if one of your cars blows out a tire or is out of the race, you got to give back something. Like, there could be cool shit like that. Like, everybody throws in a 100. Like, when me and you were at the Masters, if your guy yeah, gets yeah. a fucking hole-in-one. Yeah, you can come did. up with a, a zillion ways to carve that up to uh, to gamble on it. But Now, is there, like, when you were there, are there is there, like, like, concessions and beers? Like, I never see, like, when you're sitting in the thing, there's so many people, like... You have yeah, to get underneath. up underneath. Yeah, you're not gonna have. <laughs> you gotta go. You ever go run in the woods and take a leak and then try to grab a water bottle out of the truck? <laughs> yeah, I don't see any guys. Pretzels here. <laughs> oh, fucking yeah, no, it's not like that. It's like it's usually underneath, and you kind of have to go underneath because it gets fucking hot as hell after yeah. a while. You know, I forget what month of the year Talladega was, but uh, they tone it like they start off with their Super Bowl. They always say like that's like February. So, um, anyway, so I got, I got, I got to run here. I got some shit I got to go do. Sorry, Paul. Oh shit! No, it's fine. Um, all right, we'll 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 wrap this puppy. We'll put a bow on this puppy. Um, go fuck yourself. <laughs> I'm just curious. I'm just curious. I want to know why somebody would be like it, that. It is fascinating. It's fascinating, man. It's fascinating. Hey, how you doing today? Fuck off! Like that's nuts to me, man um all right guys all that um, need to be liked that we have he has the reverse of that a lot of people pretend like they don't give a fuck i think that your your neighbor truly does not give a fuck what does he do no first of all he's not my neighbor he's a couple blocks over thank god he's not even close to me but like what does he do on christmas when his family comes over <laughs> look at that sicilian blood dragged your fucking three blocks over you don't even fucking live they're just looking for a fight I just thought of the funniest shit. I just Christmas carolers, <laughs> like kids from the church. <laughs> it's like it's like eight little kids from the church. <laughs> like, sigh, like the fuck, <laughs> mommy, <laughs> mommy, that man. Oh shit, dude, that's fuck. Yeah, dude. Maybe that's the prank, dude. Send some carolers over to his house during the holiday season. Dude, just send like fucking 12 eight year olds to sing the most unbelievably somber sigh. <laughs> just look at and just have somebody record him from the distance. <laughs> just his face. All is come. Get the fuck off my yard. All <laughs> um, all right, guys. Well, there's been episode two. You hire them and you go, you don't get paid unless you finish the song. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's it. Um, dude, I'd be scared. I would actually be scared for that. But um, anyway, if anything happens, I will continue the saga on the podcast if, if I hear anything. But I will 
say this for the record. I am not fucking getting involved. With I that know anymore. you have a great life. Okay. Um. Anyways, guys, Stay July 23rd, guys, July 23rd, the Connecticut Comedy Festival in Fairfield. I'll be at the Shoe Theater. That's S-H-U, the Sacred Heart Community Theater, July 23rd. July 30th through the 31st, Zanies. I'm doing the Late Show Friday, Late Show Saturday, Zanies in Nashville. Uh, I think I'm going to be in uh, Omaha, Nebraska, August 6th and 7th. And I will be at Wise Guys in Salt Lake City, September 3rd and 4th. And we are shooting the special mid-September. We're getting confirmation next week. Go to paulverzi.com for all of those dates. Bill? Um, I will be at the fucking, uh, I know I got something in, in August. Fox it's not Woods. up here. Foxwoods Fox Woods in August. Yeah. Foxwoods in August. I'll be in Long Beach, October 21st through the 23rd or through the 20. Yeah. 23rd, I think. Oh, there it is. August 28th. I got, uh, Hollywood, Hollywood Florida. Florida. And August 13th, I'm at Foxwoods fucking casino, dude. Oh, dude, I'm going to come out and smoke a stick with you over there. I'm only like an hour and a half away from Foxwoods. Dude. Really? Yeah, we'll go down to the casino, really? guy. Listen. Hey, maybe I'll throw you on the show. Hey, man, we're going to hang out. No, um, also, I'm gonna, we're going to talk. I'm coming out there. Well, I mean, we're going to do some of this podcast. We're going to do a couple of these puppies in the studio. Yeah, we're okay, going to have cool. a good time out there. Yeah, and we're going to have a nice time out there. So... Uh, there you go, guys. This has been episode 23. Uh, have a great one. Until next week, we are out of here. Uh, we'll talk to you soon.